Right before we jump into this video, if you'd like me to send you this free guide to capturing motion in low light situations, just look for this orange box over on the website, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I'll send you that guide for free. Jared Pullen, Frono's Photo. Dot com and I want to show you one specific scenario that's going to help you get better photos of maybe people on the street if you're a street photographer or just better photos by using motion and motion blur when you are out and about and shooting. Now I was in Venice, Italy recently and I used the Nikon ZFC out there to get a photo of a street busker, someone who's playing music and instead of just taking a snapshot that freezes the action of people walking by and freezes the busker playing, I I decided to go with a super slow shutter speed to then allow people that are walking by to blur in the image, which then gives us the feeling of movement through an image. So I've recorded my electronic viewfinder with the ZFC and I want to play it out for you and break down my settings because honestly, you can do this no matter what camera you have. It may be the cheapest camera with the cheapest kit lens on there. You can do this because you don't need the fastest lens in the world to make this happen. You just need to be able to set your settings, take the photo, and then that's really it. So let's break it down right here. We've got the street busker here. He's playing, he was playing Imagine at the time, and he's playing the guitar, he's got his little amp, he's got his uh, case set up, and there's a, there's a note there that says something, and this is Venice. So yeah, actual Venice, Italy, it's not in Las Vegas. We're over one of the canals on the side streets, and that's important to show in the frame that this is actually Venice, and that you can tell that it's there. So this is the exact composition that I want. I just think that this works out great. So let's hit play and, and, and take a look at this. We're at 1 60th of a second at f4.8 at ISO 100. Again, the lens that I'm using on here is the kit 16 to 50 f3.5, yeah, 3.5 to 6.3 VR. This has vibration reduction built in, which is super helpful in the situation that I'm gonna use it in, but the body that I have doesn't have image stabilization in it. So if you have a lens that has IS, this is gonna possibly work out better than if you have a lens that doesn't, but if you can get super still, or honestly, if you set it up on a tripod, if you don't have image stabilization, you're gonna get the same exact results. Actually, you may get even slightly better results than I got if you're on a tripod. So let's hit play right here. So right here we're playing, I just took a picture and that would have been boring. It's just a picture of the guy there. Nobody else is walking through. But then I'm like, oh snap, these people are walking through. You see what I'm doing? I am raising my aperture because I know that I'm gonna wanna get a slower shutter speed. And when you raise your aperture, you're shutting down on the amount of light that's coming in to the camera. I'm already at 100 ISO, so I can't go any lower there. So because I know that I'm gonna wanna slow the shutter speed down, I start raising my aperture because I know as I slow my my shutter speed down, that's gonna let more light in. It's a longer shutter speed. So it's gonna leave the shutter open longer, which means it's letting more light in. So I gotta chop down as much as I can in order to get a slower shutter speed. But what I'm doing now in the camera is I'm getting those settings set and then I will tweak from there based off of the light meter, which is right here on the right hand side. So let's hit play. I'm at F14, there I went to a 15th of a second, an eighth of a second, and then a quarter of a second. And let me just explain something. The ZFC is more of like a vintage style camera where on the top dial, I'm actually controlling my shutter speed from this old school style. And that's why it's going from a 15th to an eighth to a quarter of a second. Let's see where else I go. Then, there we go. I raised my aperture to F22. And now I'm at a half a second, one second, back to a quarter of a second, and you can see with the meter that my settings are basically spot on. Plus, you're looking through the electronic viewfinder in this case, and honestly, you don't need to have a mirrorless camera to do this. The same thing will apply when you're using a DSLR. Just look at your light meter, and if it's lined up or pretty darn close to where that is right in the middle with the light meter, you're gonna get an exposure that's pretty darn close, and if you shoot raw, you're gonna be even better off. So let's play this out. See that? See how slow the shutter speed is there? You can see how long it lags. Boom, take it. Oh, I'm so good at taking it. I stopped it right where I took it. Um, and, and as you can, let's rewind that real fast again. Go back a little bit, Jared. Let, let's play that through from where I'm taking the pictures. Just look at where, what I'm doing. I'm trying to get the tween moments where the people are, and they're walking pretty slow. So I'm trying to get it so that I can still see the guy, and then people are walking by. 
And some pictures are gonna be winners and some pictures are not gonna be winners in this case, but I'm gonna show you those, um, yeah, basically right now because people stopped walking by. All right, so let's look at my favorite picture. This is my favorite one because we've got three people walking by. We've got this person on the left, we've got the person perfectly walking, their, their heel is down, that's what you want in, in a walking picture, and, and they're framing my subject right here. He is framed right here. And then on the right hand side, we have another ghostly blur happening, and I think that this is basically perfect at one quarter of a second at F22 at ISO 100. Let me jump in here real quick because I wanna show you this photo right here, edited using Fropac 3, starting with Almost Famous. Now, Almost Famous gives this kind of a film look. Then since we're in Italy, we might as well throw Capone in there. Capone looks great. Then we've got Gotham for people. That gives it a very unique look. And then we've got Zoolander down here, which actually looks pretty good on the street. But I do want to go back to Fropac 1 because I want to show you what Waffle House looks like. Waffle House looks great. Silver Tide's going to give you this black and white but has a silver sheen to it. And finally, Kensington is an awesome film looking black and white out on the street. I absolutely love the way that looks here. So if you're looking to speed up your raw workflow or give yourself a great starting point, we created 15 all new custom Lightroom presets that you can check out right now at fronosphoto.com slash fropack3. While you're over there, you can play with the sliders to see the befores and the afters. If you decide to pick them up right now, they are on sale. Or if you want to grab Fropack 1, 2, and 3 as a bundle, you can do that and save even more. Now, let's get back to the video. Now, this body doesn't have image stabilization. The lens has VR, but keep in mind, at a quarter of a second, if a subject moves, VR or IS isn't gonna keep the subject still. There's still gonna be some motion blur, like this, right in his hand where he's playing, you can see that there's mo movement. But if all I did was freeze the moment here, you wouldn't get the feeling that he's playing music. And that's great that his hand blurs just a little bit as the people are walking by. It's showing you the movement that's happening. And that's the difference between taking a snapshot that just freezes everything and having a photograph, because in this case, you can convey the movement that is there. And if we were allowed to play Imagine, I could play it for you right now. Um, but yeah, so let, let's show you the pictures that I got of him and we'll show you why I like that the most. Like this is all right, we've got a person there. He's actually a little bit more blurry. It's not the perfect, perfect sharpness, but look, his hand isn't moving in that one, but in this one, his hand's moving. He's pretty close. He's not full tack tack sharp, but to me, that's part of the scene and a little bit of movement is fine. It's not an out of focus thing. It's just a slight motion blur, but in this case, I think it works out really well. Plus, you have the case right here. Handcrafted bracelets made out of, I don't know what they're made out of. I can't exactly see what it is. Um, that one, kind of has a crotch in his face, not exactly what you want. This is like a butt in our face, so not good. I love his look here, but we don't have a person walking by that I like, and this just has one person walking by. Now, before I go too far, I do wanna say that people always say, do you give money to these people on the streets? And the answer is, look, if I'm gonna take some pictures of these people, then the answer is, yeah, I'm gonna throw a couple of shekels in their bin because they let me do this. Or I may actually do it first, just so that they know that I'm here, here's some money and I'm gonna take some pictures. In this case, it was actually pretty cool because the person that is sitting here to the left taking a video of me so happened to be a follower and said they loved my videos, which gave me an easier in to stay there longer. Because sometimes I just try to get the images and leave, but in this case, because the guy knew me, it gave me a chance to just stay there and shoot a little longer. So anyway, I ended up sending him this picture right here, and he said that that is worth more than 50 euros in his bin, and so I love giving the gift of photography, and because I got his information to do it. But let me show you some other examples. This one from Paris. I'm at 1 80th of a second. This isn't great. This is just a snapshot of these guys standing there in the subway. But next, I go to one fifth of a second. And look at this. You're just looking for that movement because most people in, in, in the subway here are just walking fast to get to their trains. And this one right here is basically my favorite because we can see someone's hand dropping money into the bin and then there's other people walking on. So 
you can do this. This isn't that hard and you don't need the most expensive gear in the world. You can do it with the kit lens and I suggest you go out and you practice it on the street. You practice getting some movement and don't forget it's not always about freezing action. You can freeze action whenever. That works in certain situations. But when you add some motion to an image in certain situations, you're gonna go from a snapshot to a photograph and that's what we're looking for. So I hope this video helped you out. Thank you very much for watching. Jared, PolandFronosPhoto.com. See ya.